Well, that sucked. Wasn't fun in any way. Uh, talking Chiefs Packers today at KC Sports Network here on 10 Things. We're spoiled as Chiefs fan, yet collectively we still feel like we're being let down when the team plays like they did last night. We're going to break it all down here in just one minute. This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. All right, I'm BJ Kissel with Haley Lewis, as always on Monday. I shouldn't say as always. I missed last week because I was under yeah. the weather, and I'm still kind of under the weather. So please bear with me with my voice and the coughing and all that. But uh, <laughs> last night didn't help me no, any better. No, probably not. Haley. Yeah, last night wasn't fun. Uh, like you said in the intro, it's definitely tough to be a Chiefs fan because especially like if you've been a recent Chiefs fan, right? You've seen all the success they've had, and you want them to always play up to that Super Bowl 54 caliber, but I mean, it is what it is. They're going to lose some games. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And if you're listening to this and you're still like angry, uh, it's one thing. You have yeah. your different stages of what you go through. What's your grief like, stage? Like that, but <laughs> I think for the most part, you just kind of have to reset expectations yeah. uh, for this team. And that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. It doesn't mean they suck. It doesn't mean they're still not going to go to the playoffs and still no. likely win the AFC West division. But uh, the expectation, and we talk about margin of error uh, and how good the team is and what they can overcome and what they can't overcome. And you know, kind of, I don't get too much into the show and what we're going to get into, but there's certain things that we've been kind of waiting on that yeah. just don't see that happening. Don't not, see that coming. Not going to be rainbows and butterflies every time, but no. hey, proud to be a Chiefs fan still. Absolutely. Before we get into it, we want to thank our sponsor of this show, Mission Taco Joint. Now with three locations in Kansas City, including their new one out in Leewood at Park Place. Uh, the ice skating rink over there is now open. So if you want to take the fam or if you and uh, friends, loved ones, whoever want to go hang out, uh, go see our friends over there. That's a great spot. And if you mention KCSN on Tuesdays, you'll get 10% off your order. And as we've said, uh, every time we've done this show, we appreciate Mission Taco Joint, not just for sponsoring this show and, and supporting KC Sports Network, but they also support the KCSN Foundation and our Feed It Forward program, where they provide uh, tacos once a month um, that we take up to the Hope Faith Ministries homeless shelter in downtown Kansas City, and we're able to serve the meals uh, alongside our friends over at Mission Taco Joint. So we appreciate their support in a lot of different ways with the different things that we have going on here at KCSN. So make sure uh, if you support us and you listen to this, we appreciate your support and you support our partners uh, and let them know that you appreciate that. And even go grab a uh, any given holiday. Yeah. If you go to one of the Mission Tacos as proceeds from that go to benefit Braden's Hope. So a lot of synergy in the seat. Actually, Did you really? I went to Mission Taco last night. Yeah. How do you feel um, about the drink? How many drinks did you have? I didn't feel like that. <laughs> came out the hell. They kept flowing towards the fourth quarter. They just kept coming and coming. But I had never had, it was like a Yucatan, or am I saying that correctly, pork taco. Okay. I'm probably butchering it, and I'm sorry, but uh, it was phenomenal. So uh, devoured far too many tacos, ate my heart out, and drank my heart away as I watched the Chiefs. Yeah, it's really interesting, like how you react to games like that, and where you, where you are when you're watching them. Like I was by myself, so like case, so. my wife put the kids down uh, to bed last night, so I haven't felt great for about two and a half weeks now. It seems like that's why I sound the way I do. Uh, again, appreciate everybody for bearing uh, with us through this, but let's get into this. Yeah, it's our ten observations from uh, Sunday's loss to the Packers, and number one, let's start with it, and let's just talk about the refs. It's going to be. Uh, the storyline all week. It's been the storyline so far. We're recording this Monday afternoon. Uh, it's all I've seen from the end of the game, even through this morning. Uh, it's just a lot of stages of of anger and grief and, and all the different things that go with it. But uh, there's a handful of plays uh, that we'll kind of talk about in, in depth as far as what they meant uh, and just game, plays that the NFL officiating crews and the people that check up on these guys mm-hmm. and kind of evaluate the refs from a week-to-week basis uh it's gonna be really interesting i wish i could be a fly on the wall uh in those meetings here how it goes yeah i watch this play because you know the one that isn't going to get talked about enough now because of what happened at the end but during the game it was one of the biggest plays was the hands to face uh of mike dana oh, on the fourth and two yeah. play it was just it was so blatantly obvious right there um i know it's easy in slow motion to make it seem like his hand was there forever it wasn't but you can't. There's so many eyes on the quarterback, especially with the back judge there, um, that it's really hard to understand how you don't see that in that moment in that play. Um, but reverse here, Haley, real quick, because I think everybody's got a different take on this. The Chiefs didn't lose this game because of the refs. I think that's the yeah the biggest thing to emphasize. In this play, the first one's a good example. Like yes, that play would have changed the complexity of this game, mm-hmm. but at the same time basically threw a duck, like just threw it up in the air, like a 50-50 ball. 
and none of the Chiefs DBs made a play on the ball. Mike Edwards was deep on it. Justin Reed almost seeming, I mean, you don't know what his eyes are looking at. It looks like he sees the ball and then chooses to kind of go make the hit on the player as opposed to playing the ball, whatever it was. Chiefs had an opportunity to make the play and they didn't make it. The ref part of it just made it more annoying and it's more annoying to sit here and talk. Yeah, about. it's definitely, you, you, when you look back at these things, you you always say, and we, we say this all the time when people constantly complain that Mahomes and the refs are just, you know, in bed with one another, right? And just... So uh, it's always the script that's helping the Chiefs win. And I guess this week the Chiefs didn't fit the script for the NFL. But the thing is, you you have to first start out by saying that the penalties are not, the refs are not the reason that the Chiefs lost the game. The Chiefs lost the game because of their own, you know, inability to play at the caliber that we all know that they can play at. Uh, you know, we'll talk about all the reasons why that panned out. But there were so many issues that people who despise the Chiefs on national the TV, I feel like we're even tweeting out the fact that those blatant calls were overlooked. Now, does that make the Chiefs win? Collectively, it might have helped, but, you know, the Chiefs yeah. the Chiefs still lost. They could have put more points on the board to, to change the way things happen. But this is an issue that I feel like this season has come even more to light with officiating. And I'm not quite sure the protocol or how it goes or how they, you know, figure out who's, who's going to be continuing to do this. But you got to go back and watch that. There's also people watching it, and where's the person coming in from New York to say, to say this is wrong? It's just amazing that people sitting at home. How do we such switch a this? Viewpoint of yeah. it, that the communication process. I know there's a delay with TV and all of that, but there's still a such a. If you just blew the whole process up and just started from it's, scratch with and that might that, be what they need to do. Even with ball spotting, I mean, we could really open this up and talk about different things, but with the technology, what you have. There are significantly better ways to do this. Now, we know they won't go back and just completely redo the whole system, but it was bad. And and to be fair, like I thought the Mahomes late hit out of bounds was an awful call too. I, that's football. He wasn't out of bounds. He's still there. Uh, it's one of those like you think it's going to happen. It was like kind of watching a, you hear like, you ever seen an arrest or something, you hear like cars slam on their brakes yeah. and you're like waiting for like the crash to sure, show. That sure. That's kind of how I felt on that play where you see Guys run out of bounds and DB's flying and they never actually make contact. And this yeah. is one of those, he was just a little bit late. I understand protecting quarterbacks. I understand why the refs threw the flag when they saw it. Mm -hmm. It's strange to me that three of them got together and no one realized he was in bounds when he got made contact. I don't like it as a Chiefs fan watching him get hit. But if it was the other way around, we'd be losing. Yeah, we'd be so there were bad calls on both sides, but it just felt like in the key plays, and we talked about the fourth down, it was a key play in that game. The Creed Humphrey, we'll talk about it a little bit. This holy call was a key play in the red zone that would have led to a touchdown earlier for the Chiefs. And then obviously the big one, the Marquez Valdez game lean getting tackled from behind uh, as Marquez did his best to make a play for the Chiefs, which his best thing he did in the week before. The best play that he made was getting a pass interference call along the sideline. Uh, I think it was against the Eagles. Talk, you can tell me it was up the sideline where he got called um, for defensive pass interference was the best play that he made in the previous game. But um, I don't know how that call didn't get made. Yeah. I, that was egregious. Uh, that, that 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 was one of them where I think everyone could agree. It's like those those are the misplays or the missed calls that result in the pl the play not being able to be fair. And and that's where as a fan of the game, you want to see something like that fixed because you want to see both sides bring their best ball. And that was an opportunity, you know, for the Chiefs. And again, not saying that they were going to win, but I don't. I feel like can't we just rest? I know you said they they're not going to reroute how everything was done, but why not? You know why why don't they put uh, someone or one referee in the crew being someone who watches it from either the press box or from the booth or from a, a, the the arrow the vantage yeah the vantage point of a camera there. the entire time and is yeah. that's going to be someone who's constantly weighing in and, and and putting a bug in your ear being like hey this is a missed call because that is such a blatant missed call. That it's got to be righted in some way. Yeah, you can put one in the production truck. There's room. Throw them in there, nice and cozy. You got all the Avoid views. the elements. You got all the views. You're right Have there with snack. the producer and director, which there is there you go. Millions and millions of people are watching it. Yeah, like, but that was a bad one. That was bad. Yeah. Um, and then the hail mary. <laughs> that was just hard to watch. I, and I understand that sometimes. Actually, say it again. Those don't bother me at all. It's 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 a little different, right? I mean, they're just throwing up a prayer, and and, and they don't always call things on that. And I get that, but I yeah, you you watch it back, and you're just like, 
pulling his arm down. I was more annoyed at the end of the game that they spent 15 minutes or however long it was talking about the pass interference on the the Hail Mary at the end of the game as if that was the one. Right, right. Like of all the things to talk about in this game, let's talk about the MBS one. Talk about the Creed Humphrey holding call. We'll talk about some Hail Mary where, yeah, Kelsey got pushed in his back. We shouldn't be in that position. You see that all the time. That's not one of the egregious penalties um, of all the things to to be upset about from the game last night if you're a Chiefs fan. The Hail Mary one, yes, should be a foul, whatever you want to call it. That happens all the time. And the play with MVS does not happen all the time where it's not called. And mm-hmm. that had a much bigger impact game. And so it's not the reason they lost. It just made it more annoying. Yeah. Uh, is the way that I put tough, it. tough to watch, tough to listen to. Speaking of annoying... Yeah, let's move on to uh, to number two because that first one took a while. But uh, this might take a while. Chiefs offense. It's just not. I wrote it's not good right now. It's just not what we've accustomed to seeing. And I I saw the stat that you know the Chiefs have more games with twenty points or fewer this year than in Mahomes' like first six years. Mm -hmm. So I you keep contextualizing it with these numbers to say yeah it's not been great. Uh, It's just frustrating because from a at least from a pass catching standpoint the passing game standpoint having the same conversations about the same guys this late into the season it's hard not to look at the position coaches and the offensive coaches on that staff because there's a lot of different coaches the quality control everyone needs to get these guys on the same page and know where to sit in the zone how to stem a route not into coverage uh, which I'm glad they're talking about on the broadcast and they're bringing these things up and social media has been great as more fans are educated on on those types of things. And that's why we don't know 100%. Yeah. To be fair, um, we know enough um, and we can see the reactions. And it's just, it's got to be frustrating. Uh, and I know you were even mentioning, you know, defending Mahomes and, and it brings in a different faction of fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. That come after you, but it's it's the same issues. And it's like, it's the first time I can remember an Andy Reid team, especially on the offensive side, a group not develop when they need to. Mm-hmm. All we see when the offensive line struggles, they figure it out, whether it's play calling, just the way they scheme it, or just the development throughout the week, it always gets fixed. This is really frustrating because it's not getting fixed, and yeah. we know this has been the issue. Yeah, I think that's th- that's probably the best point, is the fact that we know what the issue is, and still nothing's being done about it. And the, po- the point that you made, I, I tweeted out something that said, you know, we're wasting Mahomes' talent. Mm-hmm. And I didn't mean that we've, He's been a wasted talent. Look at what what they've been able to do. Yeah, it's like someone with a silver spoon in their mouth complaining that they don't have enough. Yes, they've gone to multiple Super Bowls. He's won now multiple Super Bowls in the AFC. T- I mean, you could you could list off all the stats and the MVP awards and everything he's done. That's not a waste of his talent. I'm not talking about that. But when you watch the game last night, and you you know the type of quarterback you have in there, we saw it in Super Bowl 55. They wasted Mahomes' talent in that game, what he could have done, because he didn't have a supporting cast or system to support him. And that's what last night was. It was another game where it got exposed because he didn't have enough support to do what he can, you know, what he's capable of doing. And that's what I mean by that. Like, obviously, yeah. the it's not going to be perfect the entire time through. It's going to continue to get better. They're going to lose games. It happens. Stay positive. The fans need to relax. I understand that. Yeah, it's... But you can't let your best talent go out there and have no support. It's tough because you don't want to tell anyone how to fan. You know, like everybody fans differently. Like the people are just true, complaining true. in the AFC title. Game. They're not going to win the Super Bowl yeah. if they do this and they win the Super Bowl. They're not going to win five if they don't get this figured out. Like they just won the damn Super Bowl. Yeah. Like would you rather have no expectations mm-hmm. be like it was, you know, where you're just clamoring, clamoring for relevancy. I mean, I started writing about the Chiefs and I've been doing this for more than a 15 years yeah when the team was awful and it was like you just wanted to be relevant you just wanted meaningful games in december and january and then you get that and then you want a little bit more and then it's like is it worse to have expectations and not meet them or is it worse to just not have expectations at all exactly that's and that's a thing and that's that decision and that is kind of up to the individual person and how they do this and a lot of it you mentioned it earlier new fans like the younger fans who don't know what it's they don't know the story right. of losing nine straight playoff games in an NFL record, or excuse me, nine straight playoff games, um, and setting an NFL record for most consecutive playoff losses. And I know we've talked about that before, but you know, that context matters. But at the same time, it doesn't make last night to where you don't have a right to get annoyed, right? You know, fans have a right to get annoyed. They we're emotional about this stuff, we care about this stuff, 
doesn't mean they're not awesome. It doesn't mean it's still <laughs> they're wonderful. Awesome and that it's, you know, I call, you know, Arrowhead fringers, like friends and strangers. Like you sit next to them in a game, you're high five and like yep, best yep. friends. You're never going to see them again. But you're, you and 80,000 of your you know, fringers. Um, I made that word up. But I I, it. it's, you even see it on social media, the way the different people react to different things. And you can see some people just, I hopped on a, a, a Twitter spaces last night. I was just curious what other people were saying. Oh God, people you're were brave. Blaming, people were blaming the refs. I just try to like hide out of it. I need to create some like fake accounts. So I guess <laughs> no one says like, Hey, do you want us to talk? Like, no, I don't. I know. I'm just going to start swearing. We had our own post game show stuff going on. And I just was curious what other people were thinking. Cause I know how I feel about it, but, yeah. um, and how I feel about it is it's supremely annoying, but at the same time, this team is going to get into the playoffs. Yep. They're not getting, boat raced by people are not getting beaten badly um you know they're they're in the thick of it it's just different than what we've seen but it's still better than the buffalo bills yeah. or the cincinnati Bengals and what they're going through right, right now there's still you know the teams in the afc that you're gonna have to beat to go to the super bowl the chiefs have played those teams and they've beat those teams so we know with this group if they play their best football that they're capable of beating anybody yeah you just have to see it and it's gonna be okay yeah. things are gonna get addressed because that's that's the thing. The Chiefs are at a place where it's like, do wh- wh- how do they change it? How do they get it back? And it's not again. It's not going to be perfect. We saw it happen with the dynasty that they built, you know, in New England with with Brady. They were up and down times throughout that, and it's expected. And fans do expect it. But it's almost like when you defend Mahomes, people come after you. But then also when you defend the team, they come at you. Can't you can't yeah. win with what you're saying after a loss because everyone is so upset about it. But it is it is the truth when you look at what. Mahomes is able to give a team what we've seen him be able to give a team once they get things rolling how phenomenal they can be so yes last night was not the best that they could be the potential was lost and Mahomes did deserve better he did and there were times like the, the shovel pass out. and it's like Mahomes isn't above criticism either and same thing with Andrew Reid it you're 100%. able to think uh, a little bit deeper on this stuff and say you know what Andy Reid is one of the greatest coaches in NFL history he has sure. proven that yep. he's a first ballot hall of famer that doesn't mean that he doesn't make mistakes yeah. or that he didn't read the situation of what the Chiefs wide receiver room was going to be with their position coach, the coordinators, all the people involved with developing these guys. That was it. This is the where I go with it is like, who's to blame? Mm-hmm. Is it Beach's fault for not giving more talent to that room? Right. Is it the coaches for not developing the talent in that room? Is it the play calling for not getting there? Is it for Mahomes? for not understanding these guys don't know and throw it wherever they're <laughs> they're going to be. Like, there's so many layers to this. And yeah. to just say, like, it's all one person's fault, like, it's all right here. That's the part where it's hard and it's not fence-sitting. It's that, you know, there are a lot of different avenues to this. And all you know at the end of it is the one who's in charge of all of it is Andy Reid, misread the situation, or it's the just on the players. Yeah. That they're not developing. They're not doing what they need to do to get on the same page with their quarterback. And after all that stuff in the off season, all the throwing stuff they did and all that stuff to be in this position and to, and from Mahomes, he's asked about the MVS play and he was like, I got to throw a better ball. It's like, for the love of God. It's <laughs> frustrating. It's frustrating. But, but at the end of the day, I love him for not saying anything, but yeah. it's so annoying. Just like, it's okay to yeah. say, you got to be better. Uh, you got to yeah. do this, but uh, it's not going to fix anything for them to do that. Even if it makes fans feel a little better, but yeah. I get it. We're spoiled. Let's um, so. Let's take a little break. Right now. You think we'll, so? We'll be right. We've got through two. We got eight to go. It's going to be rapid fire in the second half of the show. Appreciate you for watching. We'll be right back. Thanks for listening to KC Sports Network. Make sure you download our new app. Find it on the App Store or Google Play. Just search KC Sports Network. Welcome back to 10 Things. BJ Kissel hanging out with Haley Lewis. We've talked about the refs. We've talked about the Chiefs offense. If you're still hanging with us and you get through that and you're not too upset uh, and let us know in the comment section. Let us know on social media how you feel uh, about where we're coming from on this stuff because it is complicated, you know? Being one thing to call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just tell me what things true. are great. Sound, no, off. sound off. Yeah, you got to talk about when when things aren't great and how you feel yeah. about things and things that which we have no control. <laughs> we have really any idea of what's happening. <laughs> it's the beauty of being a fan. <laughs> you really don't know what's going on, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that we've all got... Um, we're emotionally invested into this stuff. Yeah. So um, let's talk about uh, some of the injuries. We actually got some good news uh, this we morning. We did. We did. Good. 
But injuries were a huge part of the game last night, especially Drew Tranquil going down. So, so early, yeah. Uh, and that one was scary. Uh, I'm glad they cut away. Um, as soon as I saw him put his hands down and try to push himself up, I'm like, I don't want to see this. Because yeah. Haley, we've been in the same boat. Like, we've been around, not necessarily Drew Tranquil for me, but you've been around the players and they're human beings. Mm-hmm. And we see that having a chance to cut them. And I hate seeing that stuff because they've got families and they got all that. Uh, hopefully... He's okay, uh, and it's not something that's going to be uh, long-term for him as Drew Tranquil is in concussion protocol. But Charles Amenehu went down as well. He came back, but he went down. Brian Cook went down. I know we got an update on him. And then Donovan Smith going down. Uh, it just it was, it, it was going to limit um, in some way maybe what Steve Spagnuolo was able to do defensively uh, considering how much runs through their Mike Linebacker. And you're already down Nick Bolton. Now you're down Drew Tranquil. Uh, you got Jack Cochran out there who actually played fairly well. Um not saying he didn't have mistakes out there, but uh, they got right. some stops in the second half um, that was really impressive. And I know I put out on social media that you know, Spag's going to have to be perfect. He's going to have to call a perfect game and get these guys in situations where they can get off the field, and they did. Um, but I know we got some good news on Brian Cook this morning compared yeah. to what it could have been. Ankle is coming back. The x-ray was negative. So after watching that gruesome, that was gross. The, the And seeing just his reaction... Also, the training staff immediately calling for the car is one of those signals where you're just like, oh, God, I hate, I would hate to see this. Just a second-year player, a phenomenal talent, but they did say that his ankle is not broken. It's under further evaluation, though, so we'll probably know more um, here shortly because Andy Reid's talking. It's Monday. It is Monday. I have stumbled Monday. over that one. <laughs> it's Monday. Uh, talking to Andy Reid, hopefully get an update on the injuries there as well. But that's good news. Doesn't necessarily mean he's back. Uh, we'll find out more about the fact that, you know, Drew Tranquil is in the concussion protocol, what that means. That one is really the most concerning to me. And you weigh in on this, too, because Nick Bolton was doing such a phenomenal job yeah. at that position. And then you pass over your green dot to another guy who comes in when he's injured and has phenomenal presence on the, in the defensive core. That linebacker core is it's so essential. And then you lose your Mike linebacker. Uh, and have to have another guy calling the defense. And that's just something to be thrown into. And you mentioned it, Spags had to call a perfect game in order for them to overcome that. But that's the scariest injury out of all of these to me off the bat. Yeah, you didn't see it a lot. And it reminded me last night, I, I don't think I put this on social media, I was thinking through it, that in the past I remember talking with some of the players about you know when you feel like you have an advantage with a Mike linebacker who doesn't necessarily – maybe not a new guy, but just guy doesn't see the game quite as well Mm -hmm. uh, in their scouting reports. You do a lot of pre-snap motion. You do a lot of resetting of the formations and moving guys all over the place to try and confuse the run fits, the coverage assignments, all those different things. I didn't see a ton of that from the Packers, but that's the worry when you have somebody that isn't necessarily used to not communicating because they do a good job at training camp Mm -hmm. of, of rotating different guys in so they know how to communicate. It's a whole different thing when you're being kind of singled out yeah. um, if you're Matt LaFleur and, and the Packers offensive coaching staff uh, seeing a new Mike linebacker a third string Mike linebacker out there there's a lot of things that you can do to put even more stress sure. on that person um, and like I said I, I I thought Spags did a great job I know people probably disagree with this but I thought he did a great job in the second half of of calling a game that got him off the field it didn't yeah. matter what it looked like it didn't matter how it happened the fact they got off the field uh, was impressive um, and I didn't think, besides a couple of plays with run fits, and I think they highlighted one on the broadcast um, where Cochran went one way, safety. I don't know if he expected him to come down and do a run fit. Uh, it was one of the big runs, I think, from Taylor uh, in that game. But, um, yeah, in general, I'm glad that Nick Bolton's going to be back. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully Drew Tranquil is not going to miss too much time as he goes through the concussion protocol this week. Um, but, yeah, I with so much with the refs and the offense that you know the defense didn't come out and play as dominant as we'd expect. That didn't look like a top five defense the way that we've been talking about mm-hmm. these guys. Um, we'll give some credit to the Green Bay Packers, although it's kind of hard sometimes when a duck is thrown up there and you just nobody makes a play on the ball. But in general, I thought you know, they did enough, and I'm not concerned about the defense yeah. in the same kind of way that I am the Chiefs offense. Uh, to in interject on that Sam McDowell just put out that Andy Reid his response in his presser about Nick Bolton being available to play against Buffalo he's he was non-committal on whether or not he will be <laughs> able to play there's your update he's not going to give the Buffalo Bills any information 
on whether or not Nick Bolton can play. He is going to be questionable. It's going to be a game time decision. He's asked about it on Friday afternoon. He's going to say, "We'll get that to you," <laughs> which means ninety minutes before kickoff, we'll You're have to figure it out. We'll find out so if he's active or inactive. <laughs> and I love it, and I don't care the slightest bit. I don't think that I would no. love to know. Thank you for saying though. But if we know, then no, the Bills yeah. know, and that helps them. And we don't want to help them. Uh, it's going to be a huge game. But uh, let's move on. Number four, uh, Jordan Love. I. I was impressed. I was impressed. And the way they start, yeah, I gotta two, admit. two touchdowns on the first two drives, 10 of 11 for 109 yards, two touchdowns. Not a lot of pressure on him in the first half. So Understandably you wanna, so with whether, the situation. <laughs> whether you want to credit the Packers offensive line or criticize the Chiefs defensive line uh, early in this game, it felt like as the game went on, we saw Chris Jones, George Karloff just had a few good rushes and Mike Dana got a sack in there. But... Yeah, I, Jordan Love, it was impressive to watch a young quarterback that, you know, is in a... It's really interesting because he sat for so long that they're going to have to make a decision on his fifth year during his first year as right. a starter. Um, but you got to... That's just composure. That's what impressed me the most. Uh, didn't look like he was speeding up. He didn't look nervous. Yeah, not startled. And uh, that, that that stood out to me. What did he... Let me look what he finished the game with. I did like... Uh, the revenge game because the first start of his career and then the pictures of like his parents sitting in like the I <laughs> <You> forgot <laughs> about that <laughs> those are I actually like that stuff I'm like you know what because it's real like you'd be annoyed oh, they wouldn't at the same time I wouldn't blame the chief like every team would probably do something similar you could call me out so I'm like, soon, oh, though. no one's putting him in the 50 yard box <laughs> the first video that ever came out they just slowly zoomed and then they zoomed out. So, so you had, you're like, oh, there's his mom. And like, then all of a sudden they zoomed out and you saw it just how far up. I mean, they were about to touch the, the top of the IV section. I you mean, know, they were, they were about to jump over. Tucker would know. I, cause I'm pretty sure it was before they joined Casey Sports Network. I'm pretty sure Josh Briscoe is the one who took a picture. There was like a picture from like the blimp yeah. <laughs> like from that game. And he's like, oh, you can get the view from Jerry Love's parents, which uh, is all in good, all in good fun. He finished the game with 265 or 267 yards. He was 25 of 36, um, zero interceptions, two sacks, three touchdowns. Let's see what his rushing was. Let's throw that up there too. Two carries, 10 yards. Not bad. Chiefs had a couple of opportunities to to get an interception. Oh, Cochran had one that went right by him, uh, and then Justin Reed would have had to pick six from the red zone if he had thrown one pass accurately. <laughs> if he had thrown the one pass uh, that was set up perfectly and with the person they would have sent. Who were those sacks by? Dana got one, right? Dana yeah, got and one. Chris Jones. Yeah, there Jones. Okay. I think he probably got credit for one. I think Karloftis was right there, too. Oh, I guess so they split. Okay. Him. But that was the one where Jordan Love just kind of jumped down. That was at the end where he took the sack before the field goal. Um, and shout out their kicker. I thought he hit some big field goals uh, for a rookie kicker. Um, just one of us were real close. Uh, I got nothing and no issues with the Packers in any kind of way. Sometimes it's annoying to lose teams and you want to like get more annoyed. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Shout out to Jordan Love and Have the Packers ever really bothered you? They've never really bothered me. Like it's the Raiders, the Bills. It's like that we used to the NFC just lose to the team. So it's like if you're gonna lose, you might as well lose to an NFC team. That's true. <sighs> okay. The Vikings though. To barely. And the Bears. And Does that count? Yeah, the only NFC, the only time that the Chiefs have beaten NFC North teams is when somebody from KC Sports Network was there watching, because Kent Swanson was there for the Bears game earlier this year, and then my sister and I went to Minnesota for the Vikings. It was our fault. Sorry, should have sent somebody. Tucker, you should have gone to Lambeau. What was the other yeah. home NFC game? NFC North game? Have they not played it yet? Wait, which ones did you mention already? Lion. Oh, it was Lion. First, yeah. My, oh, I was at the Lion. First, but we didn't stay. We left early. There you go. So we weren't there for the whole thing. That was, that was a heartbreaker. All the way through. That's the caveat. I did think, speaking of, that reminded me of Kadarius Tony. I'm still surprised. I don't think he's on this list. Surprised he didn't get more opportunity. Tony, in this past game? Yeah. I've, I've actually seen that take a few a few people... If you're, if you, you the Twitter universe put that out. And the only reason I, I'm connecting dots here, but if you don't have your deep passing game, you don't have the ability to trust that MVS isn't going to run his stem into the coverage, uh, or that Sky Moore is going to continue running, or that Justin Watson is going to be where he needs to be. Uh, 
as the one guy probably has the most trust and he didn't have a deep shot. But if you're not going to throw the ball deep and you're going to change and do some of those more short passing, why wouldn't you get somebody like Kadarius Tony more involved? Get him in space, have him break two tackles and you have a 30 yard D. It would be nice. It Is appears it for us? to me, it appears to me that sometimes he doesn't quite know what's going on all the time. Um, and if I can kind of tell by just, uh, by just watching it at home, because that, that, that one play, I specifically, specifically, so they get package play. He has package play. It's the same thing he did last year, and they got the ball in his hands. Well, he did have that illegal shift penalty because he didn't know where he was supposed to line up and then didn't get lined up in time by the time it was snapped. And then on that, that one play where the now, Packers no, called the timeout. Trying to defend this. Where the Packers called the timeout, Kadarius Tony was supposed to be on the field, and he wasn't on the field. Um, so there was a couple pl- times there when he lines up and it's just like you can tell he's not really sure, sure what's yeah. going on. That does affect things. That's That will change change your play time. All right, let's move on to the okay. next one. And that's the holding on Creed Humphrey, the holding call that, yeah, that sucked. Uh, every, I think every offensive former offensive lineman I saw on Twitter was saying that that was a horrible goal. Uh, in a huge situation, it just felt like Second the penalty that went in Chiefs happened in the worst times because that was a first down like first and goal from the one or two red zone yes and gosh where was that i know i'm gonna look it up so that was from the home scrambled yeah so ran right by him and then it turned into second and 16 and then Mahomes got sacked next sounds about right red zone issues lump it together uh yeah that was not fun actually i want to now look up Penalties, loss yards. So be with me for a moment. I might go back and do this. I used to do this years ago. Uh, the four core stats. Yeah. Turnovers, yeah. down, red zone, and penalties. And if you are better than your opponent in at least three of those categories, you win like 96% of the time. Um, and it's going to be the point now where the margin of error is going to get to the point where the Chiefs need to win the turnover battle if they're games. They need to be better on third down uh, if they're going to win these games. And they need to convert inside the red zone like the obvious things you know get get pressure on the opposing quarterback and don't turn the ball over um hashtag analysis but uh it's not just the penalty because we, we know that we saw the graphic on the broadcast of the chiefs seven for 63 yards sorry to cut you off continue no it's chiefs offensive line is the most penalized unit in the nfl uh and it's not just the penalties it's that they're coming oh i didn't know that positive plays like i mean i guess i could put two and two together from the beginning of the season <laughs> What happened with Taylor? But uh, yeah, it's they didn't have one of those penalties though. They have the two most fiddleized players in the league, and Jawan Taylor and Lajarius Sneed. Nice. Yep. Dynamite drop in, Tuck. Let's move on and talk about one of the rookies that has been pretty good. Uh, talk about Rasheed Rice. Yes, sir. Uh, continues. Um, I thought we were going to see more of him after what he did against Vegas. I really did, but they tried and just kind of saw bubble screens. Yeah, Bubble, like, it was him wise and get more involved. Same, maybe it's similar with Tony. Like, how much can you throw at him? Uh, these are the things that we don't know. And yeah, the only people that would know would be the people inside those meetings. Uh, they ain't gonna tell us anything. Not saying nothing, but what we can tell you is that uh, he is approaching Terry Kill, um, record as a rookie of five hundred. <laughs> Sorry, Tucker looked at me like he's approaching Terry Kill. No. Terry Kill had 593 yards as a rookie, which is the most receiving yards for a receiver with the Chiefs under Andy Reid, and that Rasheed Rice is going to break that if he stays healthy. Uh, I think he's only like 80 yards shy of it going into the game last night, however many yards he had. Uh, he's going to get pretty close. And so for all the the crap about the young wide receivers, they do have a pretty good one there. Yeah. Rasheed Rice. I want to see more of him. I hope he's number four next year after they trade for Cooper Cup. Calling it here first. I'm... But on the tape, I mean, you, I put you, this you out said there. some things that have impressed me that have come to fruition. I will put this one out there. Brett Lancaster, who covers the Rams, said it. I had been thinking about it for a while, and the only reason why, Rams aren't great. No. Stafford's older. No. Tutu Atwell is a young, good receiver. Puta, new, Aqua, whatever. Nakua, close, yeah. Uh, whatever. Good young receiver. Cooper Cup's expensive. The thing I love about Cooper Cup, have you watched any of the cut-ups of that guy talking football? Yes. He is a... This is IQ he's, crazy. He is, I, he is... He and Patrick Mahomes could have so much fun together. I don't know how old he is. He's always banged up. I get all of that. That's the reason that he's available. Go get him. Go get Mike Evans. Go get Darnell Moon. Just all of them. How old is he? Might be the oldest receiver in the league. If he's 30. 
Mm-hmm. So they won't. It won't happen. But they could trade for Cooper Cup. It's from the NFC trading him here. Rams don't have a ton of picks because they leveraged all their young players to try to and to go get their Super Bowl. Uh, they did it. Now it's now it's coming back. They've got some young receivers they need to develop with. Cooper Cup has been banged up. Trade for that dude. I don't know the contracts. I don't know any of that stuff. It'll you can get. You heard it here stuff. first. Go get Cooper Cup. Bring the cup to KC. Hashtag. Win win for everybody. It's not a bad. I mean, it's not a bad thing. Mark it down. What's today's date? December fourth, twenty twenty three. I'm sure it's been on Twitter for a while. Somebody's gonna be like, oh, I said that first. Mm-hmm. That's okay. We believe you. I'm not saying I'm first. I'm just saying that this is what I want. All right. First in our hearts. Let's talk about Isaiah Pacheco. I like him. We're going to skip. We're going to be number eight. So we already talked about the fourth and two. Yeah. Four errors to row. Um, mm. I get a no. That's the one play I really did. Talk about Isaiah Pacheco. Okay. It's fun to watch him. He's just a baller. Do you notice on that one, kid? On the one where he's like, oh, look at him driving. His feet were off the ground. Like the offensive lineman picked him up and he was just getting like pushed. They just shoved and him. He was just like they showed one of the angles and both of his feet are off his the ground. Legs are just going, just like, going like towards the end zone because <laughs> it was Trey Smith, whoever beast was behind and pushing him. I thought it was hilarious. Like, look at him drive. <laughs> like just, his feet aren't on the ground. But you know they were moving in the air. Like they weren't <laughs> yeah. stopping. He's like that little road runner that keeps him moving. I love that kid. I love how he fights. I love how he gets his knee bent backwards. Practice or it was ankle, leg, knee. Whatever, it looked painful. I hate it to watch how he got rolled up. But the kid still gets out there and he continues to do what he does. Reed mentioned the comment about him getting that penalty call uh, for, for yes, he got shoved down first and then he shoved back. You do have to have the composure not to do those sorts of plays. I mean, you seem like, I, I would have a hard time not shoving someone back who shoves somebody like that. But, uh, you know, the, the heart and drive that this kid has, he's phenomenal fun to watch yeah and he makes yeah he makes the game fun and and just he's been someone especially like when you see a snow game you're like oh yeah pop's gonna pop off like <laughs> that's gonna but be a good game for him i'll talk about both sides of my mouth here because okay. i get one of the things that has always annoyed me and the one thing that really does annoy me about fans and they're talking about the players and this because we were both around a little bit is like they don't care they're not trying like they need to put more effort like these guys are giving everything that they have and it's nice when isaiah pacheco can go out and even on like a couple of runs. Yeah. Like, man, look at him. He's inspired. Like, he's really, he cares. He's got it going. You know, like, I know they care. But yep. it's still nice to see those because then you're like, look, he's going to fire everybody up because he's an energy giver. That stuff mm-hmm. does matter and fire up the sideline a little bit. Um, and at least makes you feel better to know like, hey, he's into it. Like, this yep. guy's into it and going, they're all into it. They're all giving everything they got. They're human. They get tired. All those things. Sometimes you just don't have it. It just doesn't click. Uh, and anyway. He's a young guy. He gives all his effort. 110 yards, 18 carries, one touchdown, and a loss. I I will continue to love watching this kid and, and see what more he brings. And if you don't know much about him, dive into his personal life. Learn about his upbringing, uh, what he's overcome, the things that he's had to just kind of just put by the wayside and power through. And his story, especially as a seventh rounder pick, is just... That's that's where I get in, like yeah. feeling the good side of football is to see what he's been able to do. Um, he was one of those kids, like a lot of players, who in his first first NFL game as a player was the first ever time he had been to an NFL game in his life, and that's yeah. it was. Um, that's always crazy to me. Yeah, I think uh, it just goes to show, and I'll say this: it goes to show my privilege. You know that that is a crazy thing to me. Um, it's not like I was swimming in it as a kid. I have parents as teachers or teachers as parents, but like I at least had the oper- the blessing to be able to go to an NFL game growing up, and a lot of people didn't have that. And I'm getting on a tangent. I like this kid. I like what he's able to do on the football field, and I like that he's an even better person off the field. Yeah, I know the post game notes that Chiefs PR sent out after the game last night uh, have uh, a couple things in here about Isaiah Pacheco, and that in the first two seasons in Chiefs history. Uh, he ranks fifth right now with 11 rushing touchdowns. Uh, he's too shy of uh, fourth place in Billy Jackson uh, from 1981-1982. And then Kareem Hunt, the one that's more recent, uh, he's tied for second. Kareem Hunt is with 15 touchdowns in his first two years. So uh, there's a good chance that Isaiah Pacheco gets up into that uh, area. And then as far as rushing yards, uh, he's currently fourth uh, as far as the first two years of a running back in Chiefs history. Uh, he's 1,609 rushing yards. 
uh, Kareem Hunt has the most uh, with 2,151. So he's just 550 yards shy of having the most rushing yards in a running back's first two seasons in Chiefs franchise history. So some con- again, context uh, to what we've seen from a young running back who obviously putting up numbers, but it's the way in which he's doing it, which is really fun to watch. Yeah. Exciting. All right. Uh, we kind of talked about this one next one a little bit. Spags, the fact that he was able to figure things out, make a second half adjustment. Um, this is or, or referring to the fourth quarter where he got the stop when they needed to get one and yep. what he was handed, the pieces he was handed to do what he did. Hats off to him. Yeah. Every tough game. It Spags, I mean, even Mahomes is catching strays now. Like there's a lot of blame to go around anytime things aren't going well and sometimes you have the right people and they just Mm -hmm. don't do it all the time like they don't step up all the time we talked about Andy Reid earlier you'd be the greatest coach in NFL history but you still make mistakes you still have times where like hey that wasn't good enough yeah like we lost because I didn't do my job and that's one thing Andy Reid get annoyed about it but he takes you know that mea culpa it's like it's all on me uh but at the end of the day everything runs through him so uh it's good to see but with Spags um catches more flack than probably anybody um not i mean maybe not now but years yeah he he catches a lot of flack uh for a guy that has consistently shown that he can put the pieces together in big games uh to go and put game plans together and you know it wasn't a great game for the chief's defense last night doesn't change that uh you know this defense has been the reason why they're sitting at eight and four they're two games up in the division because of the defense and so it wasn't a great performance especially individually but with the cards that he was dealt last night he got the stops when he needed. He gave the offense a chance, and they just couldn't get it done. All right. Go to number 10 and wrap this thing up. Yeah. All right. Uh, with the injuries that we talked about earlier with Donovan Smith going down, uh, it was nice to see the young guy, Wanya Morris, get in yep. there and play. And and looking at the PFF numbers, weren't awesome, weren't terrible. Um, but for that moment in a nationally televised game to slide in pretty early in the game, I think it was a, a neck injury, I think is what I saw with Donovan Smith uh, as far as why he wasn't out there. But... Again, Donovan Smith signed a one-year deal uh, with the Chiefs, so Wani Morris taking advantage of his reps, and if he's a left tackle of the future or can slide in and play that spot, uh, it'd be one less thing to worry about um, this offseason so you can spend your time. Provided a little little bit of hope, a little bright spot in uh, what was not a fun night, watching Chiefs get injured and, and what all happened. But yeah, to see his potential and what he could potentially provide for for this team, it's it's good to see it early, you know, and, and gets also get those reps. You never want a player to get those reps due to injury, but it, it, you get thrown into the fire and he was able to perform. And I think for a lot of Chiefs fans, they see this as, okay, that's that's a really good, shining, little bright light, a beacon of hope at yeah. the end of the tunnel. Um, of course, I'm being dramatic, but it's cool to see what he got done. According to Pro Football Focus, he played 30 snaps, had 14 pass blocking snaps, gave up wow. just one pressure. Um, you have to go back, and I'm sure the lab guys are only weird games or... Uh, the breakdown or any of the other 500 shows that we have on the it's network. Sweet. I'm going to break it down this week, but uh, I'll get us something to talk about in the offseason. But third round guy, right? Was Todd correct me? O- Oklahoma guy? Yeah, he was high, he was drafted higher than uh, Darian Kennard, too. So he, he they, they have a little bit more investment in him than they do Kennard. And he's shown the ability to play a pretty competent left tackle. All right, let's wrap this one up. Just talking a little bit about this week. And obviously, they have a huge game coming up against a team that is really unhappy. Uh, we talk about, you know, feeling down as Chiefs fans right now as we sit at eight and four with a two game lead in the division. Uh, context still matters. I know it's not perfect. I know we're not where we thought we would be or as dominant as we hoped we'd be right now. But um, everything they want to accomplish is still right freaking there mm-hmm. uh, to be, to go and do. And that's to get to the Super Bowl and then anything can happen. There's still a lot of football left, injuries, all this stuff can happen. You got to weather through it. And I say that while I'm still annoyed about the offense because we've been saying the same thing for 12 games now. Um, but I do believe that Patrick Mahomes has the ability to just throw it so damn hard he sticks it in their face mask uh, and they don't have to worry about catching it or running the right route because he's just going to do it all himself. That's how I how much I believe in what Patrick Mahomes t- is doing. But um, big game on Sunday. Yeah, still exciting game. The Bills might be down. The Chiefs might feel down going into this one, but they always play each other so well. Watching yeah. Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes get to go head-to-head uh, is always a fun game. So excited for Sunday, excited for this week. I'm, I'm more excited to hear about the injury news coming out, what we do get fed or what we do know by Friday uh, going into the game. But yeah, it is it is what it is. And it's going to work out. And we're going to be fine. I hope Nick Bolton's ready to go because Josh Allen running the ball and scrambling is something that does worry me a little bit. But that's why you 
have a nickname. Do, do we know weather yet? Does anyone know weather on the, the tell me what's coming on Sunday? I can look up on my app. A weatherman? It looks like 42 and sunny is what it looks like right now. Right. Perfect December football. We'll be out there. If you plan on coming out to the game, uh, head to the Lot J uh, tailgate. It's the big one. Bunch of tents. DJ. It's kind of hard to miss uh, in the northwest corner of Lot J. But uh, my wife and I will be out there. And thanks to our friends over at Casey Buffalo Company, they're bringing a bunch of buffalo bison meat. Nice. On a bison burger for the Buffalo Bills game. Come hang out at the tailgate. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, plenty of drinks. Plenty of food. Uh, good times. We'll be out there plenty early. We're going to tailgate for this one for a while. Uh, we've already got that plan. This is one that we had circled. So if you're coming out to the game, um, come hang out with us. Finally, last thing, because we've extended it by 24 hours. Uh, if you have not yet bought your raffle tickets for the Soul of KC Holiday Raffle and Toy Drive that benefits Operation Breakthrough, you can still do that. Go onto our social media accounts. We have not been shy about posting about it. You can find links to our Venmo. You can find a link to our Give Butter page. We are a verified 501c3, so your donations are tax deductible. But we have more than 20 items available, everything from a Patrick Mahomes signed helmet to a Chris Jones signed jersey, a George Karloftis jersey, tickets to the Big 12 basketball tournament, gift cards to Capitol Grill, and a bunch of other restaurants around Kansas City. A lot of cool stuff that you could win. And again, all of the money goes towards our huge shopping trip that we've got coming up on Friday. We go to Dick's Sporting Goods, and right now we've got uh, just about $18,000 to spend this year. Uh, which is always a lot of fun. And then load up the truck for Operation Breakthrough. It benefits their Christmas store. Uh, so chance to win cool stuff, help your community in the process, our favorite thing that we do each year. So make sure to go get your raffle tickets if you haven't already. We're going to sell those through Tuesday night. And after that, we got to transfer all the money so we have it in the bank account in order to go shopping on Friday. So I uh, appreciate everybody who supported us already. We've got uh, some news for people who have supported us coming up um, later in the, maybe later next week. Uh, we'll announce that, but um, appreciate everybody supported and appreciate everybody who hung with us on this show and supports us here at KC Sports Network. Want to take us home? Go Chiefs! Woo! We'll see you next time. There you go. Happy Monday.